The story of the Buddhist Thought publication began with its founding editor, who has devoted many a milestone of his life to learning and practicing Pure Land Buddhism. Alan Kwan was the steward of the website when it first launched in Canada, where Alan resides, before it relocated to its main base in Hong Kong. Having long since passed on the baton of editorship, he is still with us today as a regular columnist with his own column on Buddhist Thought titled Teachings of Amitabha Buddha, and here he is with us. Moving on to um, some of your own personal yeah. uh, perspectives and thoughts on Buddhism, um, as some of our readers should know, your column focuses on the tradition and teachings of Pure Land. Yes. And what drew you personally to Pure Land Buddhism? And can you tell us a little bit about your own background in this tradition? I learned Buddhism in 1988, and I became a uh, Buddhist. I mean, I mean, I took the refuge, and in 1989, mm. it means one year after. Mm. So, but that time, I know nothing about Buddhism, and uh, it's simply because I want to know what life is, what's the reality of uh, life and the world. And I'm not a religious person. Uh, I learned Buddhism, um, well, I would say in a philosophical approach. So, and, but by that time, I, I, I was very busy uh, with my business in Hong Kong. So, but I participated in some several classes organized by uh, the, the youth, the associate, the youth association or Buddhist society or something like that. Is I that in remember. Hong Kong? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's, oh, it's right. in Hong Kong. So I know ba some basic terms in Buddhism. But when I moved to Canada in 1992, I have uh, a, I had a lot of time, so I start to read the sutras, uh, and yeah, I start to learn more and more. And through the Buddha Store website, I really, really learn a lot from the master, from the books, uh, from all people around me. Yeah. Mm. And I get this um, question regarding Pure Land yes. all the time from friends and the occasional reader, and that our vision, you know, the Pure Land vision, doesn't really allow for what they call individual moral development you know, thanks to the other power the idea of other power <laughs> and i can't help but feel that you know this is a misconception that needs to be cleared up okay now first of all when we say other power uh, without other power none of us can enter the land of bliss so that's why we say other power. Well, relying on other power to get rebirth in the land of breeze, it doesn't mean that uh, no cell power mm. is involved. Yes. Okay, but when we say uh, cell power, it is not the way that um, we have to meditate, we have to um, read uh, 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 sutras to go for um, some profound teaching in Buddhism because Pure Land Buddhism emphasizes on faith and aspiration yes. to the Pure Land. So, and also one more point is uh, Amita recitation also allow us for uh, moral development because yes. when I say moral development the biggest hindrance of uh, moral development is uh, the self-attachment yes am yes, I right yes, yeah yes, yes. when we emphasize other the uh, other power we have to um, understand that we are inferior ordinary being that has no way to liberate from the cycle of birth and death by ourselves. So we let go of so our that ego. So means, that means we need someone to help us. Yeah. Okay. 
um, as you say, Buddha is a benevolent. It's just a compassionate. So he is so powerful, and he deliver us unconditionally. So this is the spirit of Mahayana Buddhism. So looking back on your many years of uh, spiritual searching and practice, how has this Pure Land tradition transformed you? As I say, I recognize myself as an inferior ordinary being. So we are in the same, not same, we are not in the same boat, but we are in the same ocean of sea of suffering or ocean of suffering. So I don't, I, I learn not to compare with other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. No matter, well, I can meditate. I, I know a lot of uh, Buddhist uh, profound teaching, but after all, we are all in the same ocean of suffering. I think I have uh, solved the problem of self-attachment through Amitā recitation, you know, in Pure Land Buddhism. So, uh, self-attachment can be, yeah, let go of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you... uh, as I say, uh, all of us are in this ocean of suffering. Mm. So, we are all inferior, ordinary being. You know, when we come across the problem of uh, 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 facing the problem of uh, death yes. we have no way out yeah. so yeah that's when you recite yeah that's not we recite and also I understand that uh, the name of Amitabha Buddha consists of um, splendid merits and virtues which uh, is substantial and real Okay, and all other merits and virtues in our world is uh, what we call it insubstantial. The name of Amitabha Buddha represents the Dharma body yes. of Amitabha Buddha. Yes. And the energy, the light energy, I would say, uh, is positive and it is real. Yes. With that merits and virtues, we can be reborn in the land of breeze after we die. So it is very <laughs> important. Yeah, it's, it's a very important concept in Pure Land Buddhism. So I, I have got the most precious virtue and virus already. So it is quite easy for me to, you know, let go all the worry Merits and virtues. Because you, know, you already it, have the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, in Buddhism, we always emphasize you have to let go everything, right? Yeah. But without something in hand, it's quite difficult yes. for you to let go all other things, right? Yes. But now you have something real and substantial. And that's faith in the name. Yeah, it's, it's much, much easier for us to let go all the other things. Yes. So this is another point that changed my life after I learned Pure Land Buddhism, yeah.